There's a story that's not being told, the story of Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. The world has condemned it as the occupied West Bank. Could it be the biblical and historical heartland of Israel? Hear the miraculous stories of true pioneers who have dedicated their lives to the restoration of this land. Discover what's being hidden by mainstream news and media. Experience extraordinary places that few people even know exist. Join us for the Joshua and Caleb Report, stories from the heartland of Israel. Today, we are meeting a man who should be famous, but ironically, he's not. He was one of the heroes of Israel's history, a soldier who was one of the paratroopers that liberated Jerusalem in 1967. Wow, Shlomo Kasi is one of my best friends. He has an extraordinary story of his journey in recapturing Jerusalem in 1967. And to hear his heart and his connection to that place as he retells this is totally astounding. June 7, 1967, Israel was fighting a war of survival against Egypt, Syria, and Jordan. My brigade, the 55th paratroopers, were transported to Jerusalem to capture the old city from the Jordanian, who had occupied it since 1948. We made our way to the Lion's Gate, and then we entered. The bus, I didn't see when they bombed it, but he was standing here. And they were afraid that there is someone inside, someone with a gun. It was empty, but they shot it from down there and it will start burning. And it kept burning until we passed over here. We passed through the smoke, with a black smoke, big black smoke from the bus, and we passed through it. Then I went to some house. I said, I want to call my parents. Parents live here in Jerusalem. And I called my father and I said, Father, we have the Kotel. <laughs> and father couldn't speak even. I remember that you were crying at the phone. He said, you are lying, I can't believe it. I said, no, Dad, we are here at the hotel. He said, wow, I was so excited. He said some word that unforgettable. He said, if it's true, I can die now. Wow. It's a great minute for me. When we came to the Kotel, we made a left here. There was the shortest way to the Kotel. When we came there... Can we go there? Uh, yes, sure. Let's go there now, and then you can finish sure. the story there. Let's go. You guys ready? <clears throat> so you say you haven't been through this gate in 40 years? 40 years, I didn't pass that gate. Really? And how many years has it been since the liberation here? 49 years. So it's almost 50 years, so 50 almost, years, yeah. almost the jubilee almost 50 here, the Ovel, yeah. right? Yeah. Shlomo, what does, it, what does it feel right now to walk like this? You know, like it's, wow. uh, it's got to be special, no? Wow. Wow, to think of it that it's first time for almost 50 years. First time. Wow. And actually, we lost this place especially because of Diane. Diane said, we will give the keys of the Temple Mountain to the Wak Wak is the... They control the Temple Mountain. Right? Yeah. Wow. And those who doesn't let us to, to get in, he said we shall give them as a proof that we are, we are our face is for peace. And he said, okay, you will be owner of this mountain. When they let us in, you can walk in, but you're not allowed to pray. 
it sounds like some kind of stupid joke, but that's how it is. You can. If you do, there are people who try to cheat, and they came like that, trying to walk with someone and to pray like they're walking. Just like that. And soldiers, Israeli soldiers, said, you must go out, you said. Wow. Words from Tehillim or something. Wow. Sounds stu like a stupid joke. Right. But that's the way it is. So was there fighting that happened here, or? Here, I, as I said, there wasn't war, for, not for me. Nothing. Here we walk just like traveling right to the Kotel. Yeah. But the, the group who went from there, they had a little shoot with snipers, but not much. Not really. Uh, no, there wasn't real uh, war here, inside the walls. I have a question though, as while we're looking at the walls and we have the, the temple right behind us here, I mean, like where the third temple will be rebuilt one day, why is it that the Jewish people are so like, like what's, what's the strength, like what's the problem, like why, why is it you feel so strongly about it, like why, because like, many of us, you know, Christians from the nations don't understand, like we don't have a real understanding. About the Kotel? Yeah, we, I know about the Kotel, about the, uh, <laughs> about the Harbite, like what's, what's, what, explain to me as if I knew nothing. It's very simple. The Temple Mountain, it's like, uh, like it's written in the Talmud and it's, it's uh, how we believe that it all began. All began. Abraham took Yitzhak right here at the Temple Mountain. And every great thing of the Jewish and uh, the Temple Mountain, the first one and the second one, and uh, the Temple Mountain, actually, we believe, uh, not like the Arabs, we believe that it's something for the whole nation, and it's written there. That's why, what the King David said. Mm -hmm. He said, at the name of God, he said, my house is a praying house for the whole nation. That's how we believe it, but, uh, but unfortunately not our neighbors. Mm -hmm. You see that. Mm -hmm. They don't let us even pray from far away. Mm -hmm. You can't pray. It, it, that's our heart, actually. Mm -hmm. That's our heart. Without it, you don't have not only Judaism, not even Israel. You don't have rights to, why did you come here? What do you have here that you come special this? The Bible? The Bible speaks about that as a, as a most important. The heart of the Judaism is the Temple Mountain. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Oh, Let's walk to the Kotel. Mm -hmm. It's the closest we can get. Let's walk to the Kotel. Let's walk. I mean, you can go to the Kotel, but yeah, yeah, that's it's the round way, right? Yeah. yeah. One day we'll walk through there together. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward to dancing with you, particularly you, Shlomo, on the mountain. Because I think that's, that's gonna be a big day. All this way, from the Lion Gates, up to here, it's the first time I walk. The first time ever? First time ever. So it's like me, I never walked here. Because we always looked for the Kotl not for the stories of the war. We wanted to cut and to pray. So even for the paratroopers, right? In 1967, when they came in, every soldier was like, what's the shortest way to the Kotel, right? Like, how do we get to the Kotel? That's like, right. We, they looked for the shortest way. I didn't lead. I was at the tail. But uh, those who lead, they made two groups. We went at this very short way right to the Kotel there. It's in two minutes you are in the Kotel from there. So every soldier, it was, it was in their heart to get to the Temple Mount, like that was... Every soldier. You see that up there? 
at a little high from the cotton. On those, on that place, he tied that flag we spoke about. So when you came, were you on top we or were you on down the top, here? On the so top. you came straight on top. No, we have the, been first on the top. top, and then we came down here. And even one of our friends who were uh, planning to, to marry, he did his wedding in the middle of the war here at the Kotel. <laughs> wow. It was written in the newspaper that uh, uh, first Jewish wedding at the Kotel. Wow. All this is new. It wasn't here. So everywhere we're walking right now is houses, right? Air houses? Uh, yeah. yeah. So what's the, what's, the, what's the feeling you feel when you touch the wall? I'll tell you why, because I did it alone many times. I, I changed something in my feeling because, as I told you, I realized by the years that those are only memories. The main thing we want, the main thing is up there. That is memory. Here we can pray for that. It's the nearest place to there, but it's not it. It's not it.